Hey guys, so today we're going to be talking about four digit by two digit division. Um, you've been talking about maybe two digit by one digit or a three digit by one digit. So we're going to get into what we're actually doing in the fifth grade, which is four digit by two digit. I have a problem set up here and they're the same problems. I'm just going to do it two different ways. So the problem is 1,849 divided by 12. And right here I have a the standard algorithm, what we would call the standard algorithm. Over here I have what we've been talking about in my class as the box method or some of you guys also know it as the area model. And I'm going to do both of these problems. I'm going to do the area model first and then I'm going to switch over and do the standard algorithm so that way that you can see both. So starting with the box method, the first question that I have to ask myself is how many times can 12 go into 1? Well, I know that 1 times 12 is 12, so can 12 actually go into 1? No, it cannot, but I still have to put my 0 up there as my placeholder. Okay, I know that 0 times 12 is 0, so I have to subtract. That gives me 1. Now, I have to take that 1, and I have to move that 1 over to the side over here. So that 8 now becomes an 18. So now I have to ask myself, how many times can 12 go into 18? Well, 12 times 1, like I said before, was 12. So 12 can go into 18 one time. 1 times 12 is 12. Now I have to subtract 18 minus 12. Well, I know that if I have 8 and I take 2 away, I'm left with 6. And 1 minus 1 is just 0. So now I have to take that 6 and move it over to the 4. So that makes that 4 turn into a 64. So now I have to think, how many times can 12 go into 64? Well, that's a big number, and I don't know the answer right off the top of my head, so I'm going to need to do some math here. I know that... 12 times 3 is 36, but I still think I can go a little bit farther. And I know that 12 times 4 is 48, so I'm getting closer, but I'm not quite there yet. I know that, let's see what 12 times 5 is. Well, I know that 2 times 5 is 10. I carry my 1. 5 times 1 is 5 plus 1 is 6. So 12 can go into 64 5 times. And I know that 5 times 12 is 60. Now, when I go to subtract 64 minus 60, well, 4 times 0 is 4. 6 times 6 is 0. So now I have to carry my 4 back over here to my 8. That changes my 8 to a 48. And I already have the problem worked out right there. So I know that 12 times 4 is 48. So 12 can go into 48 4 times. 12 times 4 is 48. When I subtract, I'm left with 0. Therefore, I have no remainder. Okay. Now, I'm going to show you the same problem just over here using the standard algorithm. I have to ask myself, how many times can 12 go into 1? Like we said, 12 times 1 is 12, so it can't go into 1 at all. 0, we subtract, there's a 1. Now, instead of carrying my 1 over, I'm going to bring my 8 down. So I still get the number 18 down here, and I still have to ask myself, how many times can 12 go into 18? Well, 12 can go into 18 one time. 1 times 12 is 12. When I subtract, I'm left with 6. I have to bring down my 4, and I still get the number 64. How many times can 12 go into 64? Well, we found out over here that 12 times 5 is 60, so it can go in there 5 times, 
I know that that's 60. When I subtract, I'm left with 4. I have to bring down that 9. Oh, I copied the number wrong. Oh, no. That should be an 8. Eek. All righty. Now, I have to bring down that 8. So that's technically what that should have been. And then 12 goes into 48 four times, we know. 4 times 12 is 48. I subtract. I'm left with 0. Okay? Now, we're going to try one more problem together. And I'm going to do it both ways again just so you can see it. All right, so this time I'm going to start with the box method again. My first question is how many times can 15 go into 3? Well, 3 is a lot smaller than 15, so that's not going to be any times. I get 3. I have to carry my 3 over to my 4. That number becomes 34. Now, we're getting into high division now, or high multiplication. 5 times something needs to give me close to 34. So let's see what 15 times 2 is. Well, I know that 5 times 2 is 10. I have to carry my 1. 2 times 1 is 2 plus 1 is 3. So that means that 15 can go into 34 two times because 15 times 2 is 30. I subtract and I'm left with 4. Carry my 4 over. That gives me a 46. Well, I know that 15 times 2 is 30, so I need to figure out 15 times 3, which gives me 45, so that's really close. So 15 can go into 46 three times, it's 45, we subtract, I'm left with 1, I have to carry my 1 over. How many times can 15 go into 15? Well, 15 times 1 is 15. 15, subtract, and we're left with 0. So our answer is 231. Now, I'm going to show you this way. 15 goes into 3, 0 times. We still have to have that placeholder there. 0 times 15 is 0. Subtract, we're left with 3. Bring down my 4. 15 goes into 34, 2 times because 2 times 15 is 30. We subtract. We're left with 4. Bring down my 6. Okay. 15 goes into 46 three times because 15 times 3 is 45. We subtract. We're left with 1. Bring down the 15. 15 goes into 15 one time. 15 times 15, 15 times 1 is 15. We subtract. We're left with 0. Okay. Another very important part of division is making sure that you're keeping everything lined up. So whenever I'm asking myself these different questions, how many times can 15 go into 3? If I say 0, I'm putting 0 right above the number that I'm asking about. Okay. If you get confused or you get lost in where your numbers are, you could end up with the number in the thousands as the answer when the answer is really only in the hundreds. Okay, so hopefully by now you've kind of decided which way that you like better to divide. You can use either of these methods. I encourage you to try the other one that you're not comfortable with just to see if you can do it. But remember, if you have any questions, don't be afraid to ask.